Hi folks, um, my name is Dhruva. I am here to talk about Rockset today. The Rockset is a real-time indexing for fast queries on massive semi-structured data. I'm excited to do this presentation today. Uh, just a little bit background about myself. Uh, I'm the CTO and co-founder of at Rockset. Uh, before that, I was an engineer at the Facebook engineering team and I was building RocksDB. I'm the founding engineer of RocksDB. Uh, before that, I was at Yahoo engineering team and I built a lot of Hadoop file system. I was the project lead of the Apache Hadoop file system. I've also contributed code to HBase and Hive. And these are again Apache projects in the data, data field. And prior to that, I was one of the developers of the Andrew file system, one of the first distributed file systems that was commercial. So a quick in, uh, overview of my talk today. Um, first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the data analytics is changing over the last few years or the last decade. Uh, then I'll deep dive into the Rocksets uh, aggregator leaf Taylor architecture. And I'm going to tell three specific things about this architecture. Something about smart schema, something about converge indexing, and how cloud scaling architecture helps Rockset uh, so, uh, implement the service. So again, what is Rockset? It's a real-time indexing on massive data sets. Uh, it's used for building real-time applications on data that is constantly changing. Uh, without having to build ETLs or pipelines or having to do a less, far fewer pipelines or ETLs for you to build real-time applications on constantly mutating data. Uh, how Rockset is used, um, you usually have data in data streams, lakes or warehouses, and even the operational databases, you connect it to Rockset, Rockset indexes all this data, and then powers fast queries on this, on this data set uh, take, for example, uh, you might have dashboards or analytics or applications that you want to use the data and they can query Rockset in high QPS uh, workloads and serve these applications. Uh, let's talk about, uh, let's double click on what Rockset, how Rockset implements this. And I'm going to tell you about the aggregator leaf Taylor architecture. That's the architecture that Rockset uses for real-time analytics. For example, uh, data might be in data streams, data lakes, or databases, and then there is a tailor. Uh, actually, let me show you the entire picture first, then I can tell you more about each of these items. So there are so the tailors uh, are the ones that take data from the input sources and uh, make them into a uh, into an indexable form or a, an internal form that can be indexed. Uh, then there are the leaf nodes, uh, which actually store the data. Uh, and stores the indexes of all the data, and then there are the aggregators which are used to query this data. So if you uh, think about how uh, about these three things, the interesting thing is that uh, this is a disaggregated architecture, which means that the tailors are separated from the leaf nodes and they're separated from the aggregators. So now if there are more queries in your system, is the aggregators which uh, you need more aggregators and you spin up more CPUs and you, uh, answer the queries that are coming in. If the amount of data in your um, data set increases, then you need more leaf nodes because you need to store a lot of indexes. And if the input volume of data is increasing, then you need to increase the tailors because the tailors are the one <clears throat> which is actually uh, tailing the data and indexing them and then putting them into the leaf nodes. So you can, you can kind of scale up and down each of these uh, items by individually. This is why it's a disaggregated architecture. It's an architecture that we we didn't invent at Rockset. This was an architecture that we used to use at Facebook as well for building a lot of real-time applications. Like take for example Facebook spam detection or Facebook's news feed, which is uh, the Facebook app. All the data that you see, that's all real-time analytics that's happening there. And this is the architecture that we used to use uh, for building some of these real-time applications. Um, as an engineer, uh, the interesting thing that about this architecture that I find interesting is that it kind of follows the CQRS pattern or command query segregation. So example, all the writes are the tailors and all the queries are the aggregators. So this is the reason why it's important for real time because in a real time system, um, it's important for us to be able to separate the query needed for the aggregate queries, the CPU needed for the queries and the CPU needed for the writes. So this is the interesting part of the aggregator leaf Taylor architecture. Uh, there are some key benefits of ALT that I'll skip over for this presentation, but let's go talk about the key design principles of Rockset, uh, about the architecture that we saw. 
So the first one I'm going to talk about is converged indexing. So this is the most important part in the sense it gives us low latency queries on large data sets. So what is converged indexing? So converged indexing uh, lets you store a row-based index, a column-based index, and an inverted index as part of one converged index. Uh, the row-based index is like uh, putting your data in, say, MongoDB or Postgres. A column store index is similar to putting your data in, let's say, Snowflake or Redshift. And an inverted index is similar to putting your data set into Elasticsearch or some other search system. So if you put it in Rockset, it builds a converged index, and it's equivalent to as if you have put this data into these three different types of systems individually, although you don't have to manage anything yourself. Uh, all fields in your data are indexed. So this is the beauty of converged indexing. Uh, uh, a more concrete example of converged indexing. Mm. Take, for example, there are two documents, document zero uh, with name Igor and document one name equal to Dhruba that comes in. This whole document, these two documents are actually shredded into individual key values. And each field is, is stored as a key and in a corresponding value in the, in, in the key value store, underlying key value store. We use, we use open source RocksDB to store these key values. Um, the key starting with R is the row store. The key starting with C are the column store. And the key starting with S are the inverted index. Um, so essentially, um, depending on the query, uh, you can use different pieces of this index to serve the queries. Take, for example, there's a point lookup coming in. You have these two documents, a little bit more details about these documents. And on the right side of the picture is how the documents are stored in the key value store. So if you look at, um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if somebody is asking this question, find me all documents where name equal to Dhruba. So I'm going to use the inverted index, the first column on the right side, the first thing on the right side of your screen. And it's going to take one lookup into the key value store to find out the document ID one uh, has name equal to Dhruba. So this is the beauty of point lookups. It uses the inverted index. Whereas now if you look at the columnar store and if you want to do aggregations, take for example, you want to find um, all the users who's, who have an interest of, in databases, right? So now it's very easy to use the columnar store and go look at and find all the documents uh, or even count them. Let's say you want to count how many documents are, uh, our users have interest in databases. You can just scan them and count them using the column store. And you don't have to do this as a user of this technology. You don't have to do this uh, yourself, the system does it for you. For example, the left hand, the left, the left side of your screen, you see this query. Well, let's assume this query is highly selective. In that case, the system is automatically going to use the inverted index, uh, very similar to a search index. Whereas on the right side, where you have group buys and order buys, the system is automatically going to use the column index and give you um, the aggregates that the query is looking for. There are certain uh, challenges with converged indexing. One is that sometimes uh, traditional database systems, when you update something, you might need to update multiple servers for every record. And the other one is that a write to a database might actually write to multiple pieces of your storage. So this is the challenge with traditional uh, databases. And I'm going to explain how Rockset uh, overcomes these two challenges in implementing this converged indexing. So take, for example, this is a, the same document coming in. Uh, traditional databases, you probably put all the name with name equal to Dhruba column in one server, the interests in another server, and last active in another server. But then if you do this, you need to have either Paxos or AF to make sure that all the fields are updated on three different servers atomically. Uh, whereas in Rockset, we don't do this. What Rockset does is when new documents arrive, we write it to a distributed log that's on the top right of your screen. And then each of these leaves that we talked about in the ALT architecture, each of these leaves running RocksDB, they tail a portion of the distributed log and index it itself. In the entire document, all the fields are indexed on one machine. So this is, this is what I mean by it's a doc sharding system. It's not a term sharding system like traditional databases. So another way to look at doc sharding is take, for example, on the left side uh, is your traditional distributed database where uh, data is kind of term sharded. So let's say you have a record with restaurant data and review data. Only half of the machines will have restaurant data and the other half is review data. It's great if your queries uh, are needing to do something with the restaurants or the reviews because it's optimized for throughput. Whereas in Rockset, all the data is scattered. It's like a scatter gatherer a mechanism of spreading out data. So all the data is spread out among all the machines, uh, which means that now when a query comes, 
it can leverage the CPU in all the six machines to, to process that single query. Whereas on the left side for traditional distributed databases, if a query comes uh, and it needs to have only use restaurant data, then it's going to use only the CPU on the three machines that the restaurant data resides on. So again, there's a difference. And the, the trade-off is that Rockset is optimized for query latency, which is why it's a kind of a scatter-gather search kind of database. Uh, and is different from traditional distributed databases. The second challenge um, is that, again, if you're using a B-tree, let's say you are using a Postgres uh, system and a lot of writes are happening, the Postgres system is going to usually use as a B-tree storage structure underneath it. So when data comes in, uh, the data gets written to a memory buffer. And then let's say that one document needs to update five different fields that might actually be in five different pages in the storage. So that might result in five writes or random writes to storage. Whereas in rocks, whereas, whereas in rock set, we use something called the log structured merge tree, the LSM tree. Uh, we use RocksDB's LSM. So when data comes in, writes to memory buffer, and the memory buffer is flushed to one file on storage. It doesn't get spread out among multiple files. And then there is a background compaction process that kind of um, compacts all these uh, SSD files together and make sure that the database is compact and ready to serve queries. Uh, it also uses Bloom filters and other things that you can read about RocksDB. So this is open source RocksDB that we use. <laughs> Uh, the second challenge, the second uh, interesting part of conversion indexing is smart schemas. So what is a smart schema? Smart schema is an automatic generation of the schema uh, based on the data, based on the data that you have. Uh, it is not like you create the schema and the data has to confront with the schema. It's like you put data and the schema automatically is generated for you. Uh, I'm going to show this uh, using a standard example. So let's say there are two records coming into your system, the, 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 the two records that you see on the top right of your screen. Uh, now, the interesting thing about it is that there's a column called age, and one of them has an integer, and one of them is a string. It's 31 is an integer, and not found is a string. So now when you put these two things into Rockset, Rockset is not going to reject anything, because although the types of that field is different, it's Rockset is a multi-typed column, and uh, when you do a describe on this table, now you will see that the schema shows, that's the bottom right corner of your screen, you will see that the schema shows that age has one out of two occurrences of string and one out of two occurrences of an integer. So the schema actually captures what, is, what, the, what the data is there, what data, whatever data is there inside your database. So again, Rockset is not a schema-free system. It's a very uh, strong uh, schema system, but the schema is dynamic in nature. And this is why it's great for semi-structured or JSON or XML type of documents that are coming in. <clears throat> schema binding happens at query time. So when a query comes in, we find the schema at that time and execute the schema. It's again, just like SQL, it's a strong, strongly typed uh, schema system, but the schema binding happens at query time and not when data comes in or not when you create the table. Uh, there are one or two challenges with smart schemas, um, something called field interning that we have. Uh, it's again, the ability to reduce the amount of storage that we use to store these schemas. Uh, if you look at the three comparisons, the first uh, row is about a relational table like, like Postgres. There, it's a strong, uh, it's, it's, it's a place where all the values are the same type, so that the amount of data storage is very less. The middle one is JSON, where the type needs to be stored at every field. So that's very big in size as far as storage is concerned, but Rockset is just something called field interning uh, to reduce the size of storage, even though we support um, a multi-type columns. You can read about it in some of the blogs you have at rockset.com. Uh, another uh, good technique that we use is called type hoisting. Again, you can read about this in our, in our blogs. Um, it's basically, if all, although Rockset supports multi-typed columns, if all the values in the column are the same, then we kind of hoist the type at the beginning of the uh, of the column or of the block and make sure that the amount of CPU needed to scan through using a vectorized instruction is as efficient or as great as a traditional strict schema system. Um, the third point that I wanted to touch upon is cloud economics. So take, for example, the interesting thing about Rockset is that Rockset is a cloud service database. It's not something that you download and run it on your own machine. And in the cloud, the interesting thing is that one CPU, if you rent, 
uh, for 100 minutes, it's the same price as renting 100 CPU for one minute. So this is, um, this is unique in the sense that um, if, if, your, if your query is slow, it's not because you don't have hardware. Uh, you can afford to spend the same amount of time, but spin up more resources and get your compute or query finished in time um, instead, of, um, instead of using fewer resources and continuing for long periods of time. Because it's, at the end of the day, it's the same cost to you. So this is the interest, this is the um, key uh, observation that Rockset exploits to its benefit. So what does do, so this is the reason why the ALT arch architecture is important because you can scale up tailors, uh, leaf nodes and aggregators individually and you don't have to provision anything. You pay as much as you use and automatically the system which is based on Kubernetes and other kinds of um, scale up, scale down automatically grows to fill your ne needs. We are going to, today we are going to focus on scaling out how the leaf scaling happens because that is a stateful service. The tailors and aggregators are stateless, so it's very easy to scale them up and down based on Kubernetes. The leaf nodes need special scaling techniques. Uh, take for example, um, how Rockset uh, scales the leaves is what I'm going to talk about in the next one or two slides. So when data comes in, uh, data gets tailed to from the tailor to the individual RocksDB cloud. And RocksDB cloud is an open source software that persists the data in Amazon S3 or GCS. It persists the data in cloud storage. Essentially what Rockset has done is that you have separated durability from performance. So durability is on using object store, whereas for performance, when you need to make replicas, what uh, RocksDB cloud does is that, let's say you have three replicas and you're serving queries and suddenly your query volume increases. You can spin up another RocksDB cloud instance and the RocksDB cloud instance uses something called zero copy clones of open source RocksDB cloud. It creates, it populates the database from the same SSD files that were uh, created by the other replicas and then starts tailing new data from the tailor so that it can keep itself updated with new updates and then starts serving queries from, uh, from your application. So it's very easy to create new replicas or shut down new replicas because you never create replicas for durability. You create replicas only for performance reasons. Again, a quick recap uh, of the ALT architecture. So the ar ALT architecture essentially makes you, it's very cloud friendly and it provides uh, a SQL on semi-structured data. The interesting part is that you don't have to manage indexes because it's all converged indexed like I explained earlier. Uh, there's no need to manage schemas. You don't have a create table or a create index uh, command in the database. And there's no need for you to provision servers because servers auto scale up or auto scale down based on your usage of the data set. Um, <clears throat> um, a quick summary of what we have talked today. Um, and I wanted to capture the gist of my presentation. So the gist of Rockset is that Rockset uses a parallelized index approach rather than partition and scan approach. So traditional analytic systems, let's say any um, warehouses that you might use or even Hadoop MapReduce, they all use partition and scan. Whereas in Rockset, uh, Rockset's technology uses partition and, and index and we call it the converged index. It's also the unique thing is that the write compute is separated from the query compute, which is why real-time analytics is super useful because both of them can scale independently. And it's optimized for low latency, low query latency, uh, low data latency, and high QPS. You can read about it in this blog that I have at the bottom of the screen. Uh, again, my name is Dhruba, and if you have more questions about this, please email me, or you can interact with us at community.rocksat.com. Thank you.